Hi, this is my French readathon wrap up. I decided to challenge myself and read in French for a week. I chose The Phantom of the Opera, The Human Beast, and The Last Day of a Condemned Man. Here are my short reviews of these books. Hope you enjoy it. Now I'll give you a synopsis of The Phantom of the Opera. I won't spoil anything, don't worry, the best episodes will be left out of this conversation. This is just a teaser. There are rumors that the Paris Opera House is haunted by a phantom. He makes his presence known by sending letters to the new managers, who by the way don't believe in ghosts, and who refuse to pay him and to leave his private box empty. The old managers try to convince the new managers to take the phantom's request seriously, Let's say he doesn't take no for an answer. One day, an opera singer, Christine Daillet, not sure about the pronunciation, uh, replaces the prima donna because she's uh, ill, apparently, and she astonishes the public with her singing and then faints like a dying swan. Her childhood friend Raoul is in the audience and he's in love with her and he decides to go backstage to talk to her. He hears her talk to a man in her dressing room. She says that she sings only for him, and he says something melodramatic like, you must love me. And when Christine leaves the room, Raoul enters and sees that the room is empty. Who was that man? Christine goes to pay respects to her dead father, and Raoul follows her. Then the author gives us Christine's backstory, and he talks about her father and the angel of music. In short, her father told her that the angel of music has a beautiful voice, <laughs> obviously, and that she will hear him when her father will be in heaven. Raoul and Christine go to the cemetery and Christine tells him that the man in her dressing room was the angel of music. Raoul doesn't believe her, and then at night, Christine goes to the cemetery once again, and Raoul follows her. And I won't say what happens next. If you're interested, read the book. You'll have many characters thrown at you right from the beginning. Don't panic, it gets better. The story itself reminded me of the Hades and Persephone myth, or Beauty and the Beast. The quote-unquote love triangle isn't as impressive as it would seem. Raoul is immature and passive, and the ghost isn't the charismatic, tragic hero I expected. In short, I didn't fall in love. Although the novel has all the ingredients for a beautiful gothic tale, it didn't work for me. It had more detective story elements in it. That isn't really an issue, but the writing was really dry. The author went on many tangents and I couldn't understand some passages because of the unnecessary elements. I like the atmosphere and this book actually inspired me to learn to play a song. So that's nice. If this book where a punctuation mark, it would be an exclamation point. It's trying so hard to make you care about the characters, about the events, and as a rule, I care too much. But this was the exception to the rule. I was intrigued by the title character, but that was only because I have an affinity for characters with physical deformities, i.e. the Elephant Man or Quasimodo. They usually have interesting backstories. I won't tell you the phantoms, don't worry. This book was decent and I will watch at least an adaptation, but would I recommend it? Maybe if you're young and beautiful. Otherwise... The Human Beast by Emile Zola. While the station master has dinner with his wife, she gives him a knife as a gift, but then she accidentally mentions that the ring she's wearing was a gift from a guy. She grew up 
at this guy's house and he raped her several times. If you want to know the husband's reaction, read the book. But I have to warn you that it is quite explicit when it comes to violence and sex, at least for a 19th century novel, so you know. One of the main problems discussed in the text is the lack of empathy in people, the fight between their instincts and the rules. Zola isn't afraid to explore the dark side. The novel describes the death drive, a term originally coined by Sabina Spielrein in 1912 and later by Freud, but The Human Beast was written in 1890 and the beast, the drive towards destruction and aggression is basically the main character here. Side note, if you like trains, you will enjoy this novel. Uh, the steam train seems to represent both progress and destruction. You love it. <laughs> Zola links the lust for someone with the desire to kill them. In the 19th century, just as today, most people's ideas about love and relationship were linked to the idea of ownership. And in The Human Beast, to truly own someone, one must kill them. Another trend explored by Zola, whether intentionally or not, is toxic masculinity. Dominance is overemphasized in the male characters, and it is a beastly quality. The passionate murderer type is the primitive version of the civilized man. Perhaps the horny man sees his desire as his weakness, and since he thinks that the woman's desire isn't as intense as his, he becomes spiteful. In a sense, his desire destroys the fantasy of the weak damsel in distress. Now he is the fragile one, and to make the woman even more fragile than him, he has to assert his aggressive masculinity even more. The author criticizes the corruption of the judicial system and of people in general. The ending will not disappoint you. It's powerful, it's dramatic, and it fits the story perfectly. The Last Day of a Condemned Man I cannot imagine reading this text and being pro-death penalty. I was always against it, and I wonder how would a person with opposing views respond to this. This is a short and emotional story about the right to live, but it was very controversial at the time. I read it in one go and I enjoyed it from start to finish. Earlier this year I read Invitation to a Beheading by Nabokov and it left me cold. This is why I was reluctant to start Hugo's book, but to tell you the truth, it exceeded my expectations. You can see that the author takes on the protagonist's pain and that he's passionate about the subject. If you think that this is irrelevant to us in 2020, remember that capital punishment is still a thing in some places. The book is about what it says on the cover. Imagine how a person condemned to death would perceive the world around them, the people with their petty problems and plans, just as he is insignificant to others, others become insignificant to him. Since everyone thinks that they're the protagonists of their own life, they think that when they disappear, everything disappears with them. The episode with the daughter almost made me cry, I became aware of my own mortality and about the impermanence of everything. Let's say that death is not a taboo subject for me. <laughs> if you want a very slow mental breakdown, this is the right book for you. If you want to become more mindful of your everyday activities and to appreciate them more, read about people who can't do that. You won't meet a criminal, you will meet a person, just like you and me, who has no control over his own life. 
He wants you to know what it's like to be him, to be trapped, to be waiting for something scary, to say the least. How do you make peace with that? Okay, so thanks to the fact that the last one was so short and sweet, in a sense, I managed to start reading the first part of The Accused Kings, The Iron King in French, and I want to tell you it's extremely enjoyable and the language is pretty accessible. <laughs> this readathon inspired me to read in French even more. I hope to finish the Accused King series by the end of the year. Wish me luck. But for now, thanks for watching. Bye!